body. How's it going, retro coders? Just hoping um, to see if the viewer pops in. But um, <coughs> yeah, everything's set up. Today we're going to be learning about a very quick intro of what bitwise operations are. I've referred to them a few times in the uh, sessions before, and um, this is going to be a very quick summary, just and and also some pointers of where you can find out more, so that the next lessons won't be gobbledygook to you. You're going to need to tackle this right now, or at least the bits I'm going to show you. There is more to this, um, to bitwise than what I'm showing you. But this is what we need to move forward. Right, um, the first thing I want to say is, the bit that I won't cover is you will be, you are able to set bits. Um, if you imagine you've got a byte 0 to 7, 7 is the leftmost bit on your, on your you know, view of the byte and 0 is the one on the right. Um, I'm trying to bring up my code. Here we go. So, you know, I'm sure you know this already, but I'm covering it anyway. A byte looks like that. And we refer to those as, you'll often see them referred to as bit zero, bit one, etc. Yeah, and they're in that order. <clears throat> and you can actually use the set instruction so you could load a with x pos you could set bit 1 And that's going to make bit one, set bit one a. That's going to make x pos two, assuming that x pos was zero at the time. But anyway, that's gobbledygook. But that's just an example of how you can do that. I'm not going to cover that in this lesson. It's straightforward. In a minute, I'm going to show you a website to read up, and you'll know it all. You'll be teaching me by the end of that. Um, The main thing we're using them for <coughs> is um, bit masking. And we've already seen this in action where we wanted to cap um, a value within a certain range. We took the high byte and we capped it with um, a bitwise AND, which, um, well, I'm going to show you what that does now. Okay, the easiest way to show you this is actually to bring up the website. I've, um, I've got it here. <clears throat> and as I say, I've learned so much from here in a short space of time. And this is where I'm going to show you to read. It's on the very same site. This, uh, in one page here, not very big look as everything you need to know so first you need to understand what the flags are in the F register they are um, not used for anything in your program other than flags we've touched on them the carry flag we've used NC and C to see if it's one or, one or zero we've used Z because um, the compare instruction we use sets these flags well a bitwise operation also uses them flags because for example um, well they don't all modify the flags but if um, if you use compare or if you use uh, the, the, the rotate of bits that also uses the flags and as you see 
there's other instructions here that will modify the flags. But we're going to try. I'm going to try and stick to um, what we actually need for the next couple of lessons. So we don't need to know this right away. This bit here, bit masking. This is what we want to know. Um, <coughs> you've got two bits being compared out of each byte. It takes each bit and has to have a one on both of them for the result to be a one. And that's a way of masking. A value because you could um, have three zeros at the front and then the rest ones and then um, you know you specified what that byte is <coughs> so then you, that would be um, you, you'd ensure that that would have zeros at the front as a result otherwise the OR instruction <coughs> does the reverse of that where as long as there is a one there in one of the bytes in that bit then it will uh, it will produce a one as a result XOR I've only I haven't personally used it except for to make a zero <laughs> I've been shown that XOR A will always result with A being zero Again, we can ignore this right now. Um, we're going to use the AND in our next lesson, which is creating random number generators or pseudo random numbers. There's not really a great deal I can do in this particular lesson. It's a very, very short one. It's, it's an introduction to, to what this is what I'm showing you here, we're going to put it to use in the very next session. But ideally, I want you to go away and read this exact website. If you Google, you don't have to write that URL, expect Google Z80 heaven, flags and bit level, you know. There's no point in me sitting there and explaining it and ruining our code with an example or just creating a new file just to make an example because this here is much better than I could explain it and like I say the very next lesson we are going to put it to use in our own game that we've been making so I decided this was the way to go about it and I don't understand every little bit of it I mean this is quite straightforward when you want to when you've read it and I do understand it. But, um, sometimes when you see it in use in a program, then it gets a bit confusing. But um, we're going to battle through that, you know. So <laughs> thanks for sticking with me. As I say, very, very short stream here. I'm going to upload it to YouTube right away. Um, you guys watching it on YouTube, you're going to end this video. Go and read these websites. There's not just this, look, what I've showed you here. But also, you go into the specific instructions. So you've got AND, you've got XOR, and you've got OR. And it really details it very straightforward here and tells you if any flags are affected. Okay. Then you've got some examples in, in this one. But this also tells you how you can use it. But if you don't understand this, just ignore it for now because we're going to work for a course and you're going to start to understand all this. It's really easy. You know, that's just telling you what you can, what you can and can't do with this and instruction. But um, so and's there. You can just do what I've done here and highlight that and change it to or. And you see the difference. Yeah. Go back to and. That's the only difference. Is how they the result they give. <clears throat> it's XOR. That's like the opposite of OR. Or that's probably an accurate statement. What I just said, but, you know, that's um. It basically just means that if they're both one, it goes to zero. Otherwise, it's the same as OR.
So you re you read this, all of it really, but particularly the bit masking bit. Then you just skim read these these three that I showed you, particularly uh, this bit of each one. What this bit is telling you is how many T states. That's what I was going on about with processing power. Each each T state is what adds up to the uh, the megahertz. So if you've got a 3.5 megahertz processor, you get 3.5 million T states per second, I think it is. So you've got to divide that by 50. Or you could just times each T states by 50, whatever's easier for you. But in practice, I find it doesn't work like that. Because I've had very small programs that fail to um, to complete the cycle, if you know what I mean, before the rendering occurs. So obviously you don't get a full three and a half million T states, as far as I know. Again, <laughs> I might be wrong. I'd love for someone to correct me and give me a detailed uh, explanation about that sometime. Uh, all right, this is plenty long enough now. Talk about this website. The code on my, um, you know, on our screen here wasn't really relevant today or this session. I don't feel like <coughs> adding any examples for the reason I explained. So, yeah, I'm going to go way up this, oh, this to YouTube and um, check on back soon because I'm coming back real soon. Let me know in the feedback. Should I be giving um, like a, what's the word? A lot of track channels have a trailer or whatever to, before it starts. So it's going to start in six minutes or whatever. I don't see the point in that, but let me know if you think I should do that. I could probably just put some music on in the background, some old chip tune that's com uh, copyrightless or copyright free, and uh, put a little warm up video or whatever. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm juggling that idea in my head. Anyway, I'm rambling on. Have a good day, guys, and I'm coming back soon. See you in a bit. Bye-bye.